Hi everyone and welcome back. In our previous lesson, we created our data section of our smart contract where we had a couple of structures which were swim of objects and also we had some events. And in this part, we are going to create our initialization function which is called init for short and we also create our create card function. Let's get started. If you remember, this init function was a special function. For that, I only say fun for the function. It's also fun. And we are going to say init. And this will take one parameter and this will be a mutable transaction context. Now, inside this init function, we are going to create our developer hub object, dev hub object, and we are going to share this object so that anyone can update this. Since we are using this table for the storage for our developer cards, and this is inside our dev hub object. So for that reason, we are going to say transfer, but here we are going to say share object. Inside this, we are going to create our dev hub object. Let's say dev hub here. And inside this, we will have ID, owner, counter, and cards. For the ID, we will say object, new, and we are going to give this uh, transaction context variable. Next, we have the owner, which will be the sender of this transaction. So whoever deploys this contract will be the owner of this contract. We will have the counter and we are going to initialize our counter with zero. And finally, we will have our cards, Those cards. And for that, we are going to say object table, new, and we are going to pass the transaction context. So here we created our new web hub object and we are not transferring this object to anybody, but we are sharing this object. And again, when we share this object, it can be accessible by anyone. But since we are going to restrict the manipulation of this dev hub object, it won't be a problem because they can interact with this object, but they have to use the functions that we provide. So it's going to be okay, no worries. This is our initialization function. It's going to run once and that's when we deploy our contract. Next, let's create our create card function. It will be an entry function. So I will say public entry function. Let's say create card here. And inside this, we will have a couple of parameters. So first we will have the name and it will be vector of U8. Again, uh, since uh, we don't have strings, but we can convert this to a string, we are going to get these as a vector of U8, but don't worry, it's going to be easy and we are going to convert it to a string. Next, we will have the name and then the uh, title and image URL. We don't need to have this owner because it will be the transaction sender. So we will have the title, we will have image URL. This will also be a vector of U8, but we are going to convert this to a URL. Next, we have years of experience, which will be a U8. Now that we have our all parameters, we can move on with our function. In our function, what we are going to do is first, we are going to get the tokens from the user and we are going to transfer these tokens to the owner address in our dev hub. After we got the tokens, we are going to create our event and we will emit that event. After we emitted that event, we are going to create our object and we are going to add this uh, object to the table. First, I will say that value equals, I'll say coin value, and inside this value, we will have the, now that uh, we got this uh, payment in this uh, value variable, we are going to check if the amount is enough. For that reason, I will say assert and here. I will check if the value is equal to the minimum card cost. And if this is not the case, then we, we are going to return the error saying insufficient funds. Actually, we are uh, saying one here because our insufficient funds corresponds to one. But 
uh, since it's worse to look at and it's harder to understand what's happening here, imagine that you have a couple of uh, search, couple of errors, and it's hard to manage too. Because if I change the errors on top, then it's going to be affect every place that it's used. So it's going to be much easier to read and actually easier to use. For that reason, instead of writing one, I'm writing insufficient funds. Oops. And we get an error here because it shouldn't be sweet, but sweet. It's my bad story. Since we haven't returned uh, anything and we haven't uh, used uh, many of these parameters that we got a couple of errors, but don't worry. After the assert, I will actually make the transfer these tokens. And we'll say transfer. And for this one, instead of transfer, because we used transfer for object transferring before, here I will use public transfer. And inside this public transfer, I will have my payment and also I will have my devhub.owner because we said that we are going to transfer these tokens to the owner of this developer hub here. And that's how I'm uh, transferring these. Here I get the devhub, then uh, I get the owner. Now that we have our tokens and we transferred our tokens, we can move on with our function. First, I will say, devhub.counter equals devhub.counter plus one. So I'm incrementing counter in the beginning of the function. So every time someone creates a new card, then this means that we actually incremented our counter so that we can update our uh, IDs. Since we initialize our counter in our init function with zero, I want our cards to start from one instead of a zero. I'm doing this uh, in the beginning of the function instead of the end of the function. Now I will create an ID that we can use in our object. I will say object new and I will pass transaction context. I'm creating ID separately, not inside of the object because you are going to see that in many cases, we are going to give this object new directly like we did here. But in this case, I am actually creating this ID outside of the object and it's because I will use this ID not only for the object, but also for the event. Now let's uh, emit our event. I will say event emit as the name suggests. Inside this, we are going to say card created. Inside this event, which is card created, we are going to have the ID. Here we are going to say object. And here I will say UID to inner. And we are going to pass our ID's reference. And this way, I can create my uh, ID in my event. And again, I'm going to use UID to inner here. Next, after I got my ID for my event, what I have is the name. So for the name, I will use the name, but it's a, a vector of U8. But what I need is a string. So I will say string UTF8. And then I will convert it saying the name. After the name, we have the title. Or before the title, we have the owner. And for the owner, we are going to say transaction context sender. And I will put my variable here. And after the owner, we have the title. And this will be the same. Next, we have the contact. And again, it will be string UTF8 contact. I know it looks like we are doing a lot of things instead of just writing string. So it may look a little bit complicated, but if you actually look what we are doing, the ideology is pretty simple. We are just having vector of U8 and we are saying, okay, I, I need a string. So from the string, I have a function called UTF8. And if I give the parameter, which is a vector of UA, then I will have my string. So it may look a little bit more work and which is correct over there, but it's actually uh, pretty simple after we got used to it. And this will be my event. So, so that's how we can create our event. So it's a pretty simple process. On the top, we created our event struct, like another struct which had the copy and drop abilities. Now we are creating our event inside of this event emit. This is all for the events. It's a pretty simple process. Little work for us, 
a lot of uh, relief for the front end. After the event, I will create my developer card and I will transfer it to the uh, table. Let's create our developer card. I will say let web card equals web card. And inside this dev card, we have a couple of fields. So let's start with the ID. So this will be our ID, which we created here. Next, we have the name. And this will be also, again, the same thing, UTF-8. I will say the name. After the name, we have the owner. And again, owner will be the uh, transaction sender. After the owner, we have the title. Next, we have the image URL. Again, we need a conversion here because our URL is a vector of U8. What we need is a URL. So uh, what we are going to do here is that I will say URL, new, and save from bytes. And I will say image URL. So like our uh, strings, and the UTF function inside of our string converts this vector of UA to a string. We can actually convert these bytes into a URL using new unsafe from bytes in our URL here. If we have vector of U8s, we can actually convert them to a URL if we need it. And we can also convert to a string if we need that too. So even though it looks a little bit more work, it's not a very bad idea to have vector of U8 because it's easy to convert. After the image URL, we have the description. We are going to uh, initialize our description with option none. So with this one, we are actually creating no description. In the beginning, when you create your card, you will have no description. And if you want it, you can add it later. As we talked in our previous lesson, this is not the best implementation of the contract, but this is a contract which is reasonably logical and at the same time i want to give you the enough concepts so that it can create your basis for the future so i want you to uh, create this option and update it later but of course you can come up with a system which is not like this one again i highly encourage you to play with this contract and say okay maybe maybe this should be better why we don't do this so if you play with it then I think that's the part that you are actually going to learn to work with Sui Move. If you have any questions while this process, you can ask on our Discord channel. After the description, we have years of experience. Since it's the same name with parameter here, if I can find it here, yeah. We don't have to say years of experience, years of experience like this, but we can simply say years of experience. Next, we have technologies. And this part will be actually pretty straightforward. Now that we have our developer card, or dev card, but I said the word, let's make it a dev card. Now that we have our developer card, we can transfer this to our table. So to transfer this to our table, we are going to use a function that really looks like transferring an asset to an uh, user. So for that, I will say object table, and I will call the add function from the object table. If you see, we have this coin and we have the value function inside this coin. We have this URL and we have the new unsafe from bytes in this URL. We have the string and we have this UTF-8 function in the string. And now we have the object table and we have this add function in the object table. Whatever we need and whatever we are using in Sui Move, actually we can have it in these contexts. So, it's actually a pretty straightforward development process. And if you know that you are going to be an object table and you need to add some uh, value to this table, then you can think that, okay, probably there is a function in this object table that helps me to add uh, some values to this table. If you need to convert a vector of UA to a string, then you can say, okay, I think there might be a function in the string which can do that. So as you can see, 
it's constructed in this way so it's easier for us to understand and actually work with these implementations. To add this first, I'm going to give the a mutable reference of this table. So I will say mute. And our table is actual dev hub and inside the dev hub we have cards. So this is our table. Then I will provide the key, which will be the counter. But uh, it can be direct to the counter. Sorry, my bad. It will be dev hub .counter. Finally, I will add my value, which is the dev card. So again, I use this add function from the object table, and I gave the mutable reference of my object table, which is the dev hub .cards, because our table is in this dev hub object. Then we provided the key, which is our counter. We got it from the dev hub again. And the thing that we are going to add is our dev card, which we created here. And with this function, we can have our developer card and we can add this card to the table. This should be object. Thank you very much for listening to me on this video. And in the next lesson, we are going to uh, create the rest of the functions, the deactivate function for our open to work field. And also we will have our update description function where we are going to learn how we can work with options in Suimo. So thank you very much and see you on the next one.